Deutschland, das Land der Dichter und Denker. Which is German for the country of poets and thinkers. That's a common expression for Germany's cultural heritage, which includes everyone from Johann Wolfgang Goethe, who wrote the famous story of Faust, to Martin Luther, who initiated the Protestant Reformation, to the Grimm brothers, or Brothers Grimm, who are known for their many tales. It's probably fair to say that we know at least one German who has left a major impact on the world. How about a brief German lesson? German is a notoriously difficult language. The Foreign Service Institute in the United States, a department of the federal government that gives advice to employees about foreign affairs, puts German in the class two of languages. For comparison's sake, French, Spanish and Italian are in the class one group of languages, whilst Mandarin is in class five. That makes German the most difficult major European language. We all know how to say good morning and goodbye in German. Guten Morgen and Auf Wiedersehen respectively. But what makes German so difficult? Many things. First, you have the use of articles before words. Da, the masculine gender. D, the feminine gender. D, plural. Das, the neuter gender, which is supposed to denote gender but leads you into word situations like where a young girl is das Fraulein, which means a young girl has no gender because das is the neuter gender in German. That was noted originally by Mark Twain. So having said that, the word Fraulein isn't used that much these days in Germany. Then you have the use of cases, the nominative case, the accusative case, the dative case, and the genitive case. The English language pretty much only uses the nominative case. But in German, which case you use depends on whether you are just naming the object, for instance, the ball, or whether you are doing something to the object, for instance, I am kicking the ball, or whether you are doing something indirectly to the object, for instance, I will speak to the ball or whether the object has anything in possession, a bit like our apostrophe, for instance, the ball's home. And even then, this list is not exhaustive, because the case can change for arbitrary reasons, because of the use of prepositions such as auf, mit, and bis. Yes, I know. So confusing. Okay, that hopefully gives a good overview of Germany and a bit of insight into Cologne. Let's actually go and do some exploring. But before we begin exploring Cologne, ever wondered what Westminster Cathedral in London is like? We have a travel guide showing you everything you need to know about Westminster Cathedral in a busy city like London. Or have you considered visiting the United States? We're recommending Minnesota and its capital city, St. Paul. Find out how this city was once named Pig's Eye and the cathedral the city takes its newer name from. Church Map is an upcoming technology company with a Christian focus. Our travel website focuses on churches around the world. Want to know where the best religious art is? Or where to get married? Or even the best place for some peace and quiet? We've got you covered. Church Map is also launching a dating, jobs, music and games service. Excited? We are too. Just be sure to visit churchmap.com when we fully launch. Super! We're off to Cologne. It probably goes without saying that if you're coming to Cologne, you're most likely planning on visiting Cologne Cathedral. Construction for Cologne Cathedral began in 1248 and it has been a defining landmark of Germany ever since. It is one of the most visited landmarks in Germany today and it was at one point the largest structure in the world. We created a travel guide showcasing all you need to know about Cologne Cathedral. Just be sure to click the button above to be taken to our amazing travel guide of Cologne Cathedral. But there is more to Cologne than Cologne Cathedral. Cologne has an efficient transport system. Typical of the Germans, eh? And it has a scene that breathes creativity. Just look at this African artist and listen to this drummer guy. Cologne possesses the unique quality of being able to blend the old with the new and history with modernity. The history of Cologne doesn't stop with Cologne Cathedral. Cologne is home to one of the oldest universities in the world, 
the University of Cologne, or in German, Universität zu Köln. One of the city's most famous inhabitants, Albert the Great. He was a pioneer in medicine, biology, and theology in the 13th century. Great indeed. Speaking of St. Albert, do you know what Church Mapped is? Church Mapped is an upcoming technology company with a Christian focus. Whilst our travel section focuses on churches around the world, we have a game section too. One of our upcoming games allows you to collect and trade cards of your favorite saints. But we can't reveal too much right now. Just subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and give us a like on Facebook to be kept in the loop on updates as to when we fully launch. Now back to where I was. Oh yes, Cologne is rich with religious history, apart from Cologne Cathedral. The city has 12 Romanesque churches, built between 1150 and 1250, one of which is St George's Church, where we will be heading today. The central city district of Cologne is called Innenstadt, and it can be divided into five parts. Altstadt Süd, Neustadt Süd, Altstadt Nord, Neustadt Nord and Stoitz. The Innenstadt houses the most popular tourist attractions of Cologne, from Cologne Cathedral to the various Romanesque churches of the city. St George's Church itself is located in Altstadt. The exact date St George's Church was constructed is not exactly known, but it is believed to have been consecrated in 1067 under Archbishop Anno II sometimes spelled as Hanno II. He is now commemorated as a saint. In fact, you see him the moment you look at the entrance of the church. He is depicted here together with St. George. Furthermore, if you look above, he is also commemorated together with St. George and the Blessed Virgin Mary holding a child Jesus. The church fell into disrepair in the early parts of the 20th century forcing it to close in 1921. There was an attempt to repair it later on in the 1920s, although this too was ultimately in vain because the Second World War caused substantial damage to its architecture. It is what is on the inside that perhaps distinguishes St George's Church. One of the striking things that a mindful visitor will note is how the entrance is filled with thank you notes. These are all to a man called St Jude. Catholics usually request his prayers in a situation that seems hopeless. He is the patron saint, or go-to man, of seemingly impossible endeavours. These notes were written by those who believed their prayers were answered. So the next time you go out to get that lottery ticket, you know just the man to ask. <laughs> Another distinguishing aspect of St George's Church, Cologne, is its emphasis on those with disabilities particularly for those with hearing difficulties. So if you are a tourist or believer with disabilities, you know just the church to visit. One of the things that strikes you as you enter into the church is its simplicity. In comparison to other churches, not least Cologne Cathedral, there aren't as many stained glasses or statues. Earlier it was mentioned that the church was damaged badly during the Second World War. Well, the crucifix above the altar is one testament to this. It is in fact a reconstruction of the original copy which is housed in the Museum Schnittiger, which is also in Cologne. The stained windows here were primarily developed by Jan von Picker, a Dutch artist known for his art within the New Art Movement. That wraps up St George's Church, Cologne. I hope you enjoyed your time exploring. In an upcoming episode, we will be heading to Brussels, Belgium to see the Church of Our Lady of the Sablon. Don't forget to give Cologne Cathedral in Cologne, Germany and Westminster Cathedral in London, United Kingdom a look too if you haven't already. If you are missing London, we have an upcoming episode where we will be reviewing Guardian Changel's Church in the East End of London. Please do subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Until next time, 